do share on Facebook. What's up, everybody? Sorry, I run a few minutes late. Per usual, nothing works. All right. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. This is the Riot Podcast with Matt Muscona and Ryan Terrio. One is an athlete, the other, an athletic supporter. Follow the guys on Twitter at Matt Muscona and at Artario7. Here's Matt and Ryan. All right, Ryan Podcast. Let's get it. I'm Matt. He's Ryan. All that good stuff. How are you, dude? I'm doing good. It's a beautiful day outside today. Yesterday, top notch day of the year. It's been a it's been a early year. Not a lot of days thus far, but yesterday, nicest one thus far. I loved it. It's great. Warm out, sun was out. It's like 41 degrees no, when I woke up today. Yeah, that today sucked. Yeah. I don't do cold, man. I don't do cold at all. No. Cold's not good, but yesterday, like midday, 2, 3 o'clock, it was, it was nice. Yeah. So I'm feeling good. Bro. You know what I How was doing you? yesterday at 3 o'clock? I'm sorry. Sitting in this dark studio yeah. without windows. That's something. Not enjoying the weather. No. Salty right now. By the way, um, Alex Bregman got paid a lot of money. Yeah, he did. Oh, my God. Hundred million. Hundred million. Hundred. Does uh so is he the richest guy now that you know that's like a friend? Probably. Yeah. I, I haven't even thought about that. I mean I was thinking like, about that last night. I'm like, God, hundred million dollars. Yeah, like I'm just trying to think like who I would consider friends. Yeah. Uh n- no, nah, probably. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, I'm trying to think like business owners. You yeah, know. acquaintances though. But it's, maybe. Yeah, yeah probably, I think he is. I think he won. I think he. Did you gotta remember? What did he get when he signed six? Yeah. So six. He hadn't spent all that. You don't think so? I mean, if you watch his YouTube channel, it sure looks like he has. He's got like a three-story house. He's got a monster house. He's got like like a shoe collection for days. It's like, man, really? Yeah. Man, it's been six, though. Yeah, he's the richest. He's the richest, like, the guy I would say, like, friend. He's a friend of mine. Wow. Absolutely. Good for him, man. It's a lot of loot. Yeah. Good good. for him. It's good. So you and I talked about when when Bryce Harper got his deal Mm -hmm. and – you know, Machado got his deal. We we did talk about Bregman a little bit then. And you said that you wouldn't be surprised if that the Astros and Bregman had already had some of those conversations, which makes a lot of sense, right? right. We can get into the particulars, but do you, why would Bregman do this now if they had already had some of those conversations and maybe it, with the context that I mean, last week the story was that Bregman was unhappy because they were kind of shortchanging him, he felt. Yeah. So why do this deal now and not before? I mean, the conversation w- was was had last year. I, I w- had heard numbers thrown around and close to $100 million. So last year, I'm sorry, before last season? Yeah. Or during last season. During last during season. During last okay. season, yeah. Because that's important for context because he finished fifth in the MVP vote. Sure. So if the in the neighborhood of 100 was before last year, obviously it goes up considering the year he had. Yeah, and then, the, you know, the agent so starts the conversation generally with the team or, or the player says, hey, man, let's let's work something out. Let's It's time for me to get paid. And and w- what I what I think happened, I don't know this for sure, but the number of years, the length of the extension was longer than six years. So it was seven, eight, 
10 year type deal. And he just wasn't ready to commit to that. So I, I think the dollar amount was probably pretty close. Um, you know, but, but, uh, you know, this puts him at free agency at what, uh, 30, 30 30 years old, 30 years old, you know, so basically the prime of your career. And, um, so, I mean, the timing works out perfect for him for sure. Let's walk through the, the specifics of the contract. Okay. So he would have been in the final year of his rookie status Mm -hmm. this season, year three, Yep. then arbitration. So walk me through what. Just walk me through the particulars. Okay, so year, so so first year. Let's take this first year of his six year de- six year deal that he just got. So he would have been making five sixty. Yeah, somewhere in the neighborhood. Okay. So instead of that, he's making what eighteen, nineteen. Now I need one piece of clarification though, because Chandler Rome was the LSU guy as well. Worked at the Advocate for a while. Who now covers the Astros? Is the beat writer for the Chronicle said that this is a five-year deal. It essentially voids his arbitration years in the ter- first two years of free agency, but not 20, 2019. So am I to believe that 2019 he's still under his regu- his what he would have been paid at 19, and then the new contract picks up in 20? Well, then why would you... I don't know why you would do it right now. You, you understand what I'm saying? I don't know. I mean, if, if that's the language in the deal, then that's the language in the deal. He He... he he could have gotten a signing bonus for this year that okay. would cover this year. I, I'm guessing. But Maybe that's how they just spread out the yeah. cash. Okay. For the sake of the the argument of the of the actual contract, though, this year it's fair to say it is a win for Bregman. He would have been making half a million. Instead, he's making. Okay, here you go. So his base salary is six forty this year. Okay. Okay. His luxury tax salary is sixteen point six million, but his payroll salary is six hundred forty thousand dollars. What is the luxury tax? What is that? He still gets that money. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So, so eight. but his his adjusted salary is six hundred forty k. Got it. Okay. So year one, which would be twenty nineteen, win for Bregman. Mm-hmm. Right. Year two, which would be his first year of arbitration. Let's say he duplicates what he did last year. Which would be really good. Yeah. Um. He would probably get. Eight to twelve million in arbitration, I would say. Around there, that, that that's that's pretty stiff. That's a big arbitration number. Um, but instead, he's getting eighteen. Win for Bregman. Third year of the deal, which would be his second year of arbitration, same as the same as the first. I mean, you'll get a bump. So let's go ten to fourteen because he duplicated that same year. Again, win for Bregman. Third year. Same thing. Let's say he goes up again. Win for Bregman. Or push, but let's just say win for Bregman. Bregman, Alex wins in the first four years of this deal. Mm -hmm. Okay? Assuming he duplicates what he's been doing, which is a giant assumption, I think the team wins in the last two years of free agency, or the first few years, two years of free agency. Not on the dollar amount particularly, but the fact that they can keep him in Houston. You know, because you go through your rookie deal for three years, then you go through arbitration for three years. You've been in one place for six years. You know, I mean, it's only human nature to start looking around a little bit. You know, and, and if, if you continue to, to put up numbers the way that I'm assuming that he does, you're going to get the big boys are going to be calling. The Yankees are going to be looking, and they're going to be throwing numbers out there. The, the, the Red Sox, the Cubs, you know, guys with deep pockets are going to be looking. Um, now the Astros have him locked up in those first two years of free agency, which he may have gone. Now the money I think is probably pretty similar. I would put him in a twenty million dollar, twenty to twenty five million dollar a year range, assuming again that he duplicates what he does on on the numbers, which is going to be close to where he is. I mean, it's going to be at eighteen. Um, you know, so so the last two I think is a club victory because they get to keep him. I think the first four is a victory for Alex. We're friends with him, so we like that. You know, it gets money in the bank for him earlier that can start working for him earlier, grows his wealth earlier on in his lifetime. Um, so that's all wins for Alex, man. And, and you know, you, you want this as a player. I can remember being in his shoes. I didn't put up the numbers that he put up. Um, but I can remember being in Alex's shoes going, 
gosh, I just want an extension. Just give me a long-term deal. I, I want to be here. Give me a long-term deal. Give me a long-term deal. Um, I want that security. I need to know where I'm going to be. I want to buy a house, uh, you know, and, and it's a little different family dynamic for me because I had children, but, um, you know, so it, it's, it's what the player wants, man. And, and, and I think it works for him early on. I think the team wins on the back end. So he'll hit free agency for the first, like real free agency for the first time in his career at 30 years old. Right. Let's talk about what's possible then, provided the scenario plays out that we just talked about, mm-hmm. where Bregman continues as an MVP caliber player through his 20s, maybe wins an MVP. Right. It's not unrealistic. He finished fifth in the voting this past year. He's certainly gaining enough notoriety, and he's likely going to be playing on a winning team. So let's say he continues at this pace mm-hmm. and is this caliber of player, you know, Gold Glove candidate, third baseman, yep. MVP candidate on a winning franchise. At 30, what's realistic for a guy like Bregman? And you look at like a Nolan Arenado contract, you know, what he just got. I think that'd be a, a similar comp a, at the time in his career. Alex Alex would be a little bit older at that point, but Nolan Arenado in his first, um, I believe it's eight years that he's been in the league, he's won six gold gloves. And he can really, really hit. Now, granted, he's in Colorado, but this is a guy that puts up 20 to 30, 35 homers a year. So it would be similar to what Alex is doing. He didn't break the bank. I'm, let me look up his. He got 280. So let's just say 280, but I, what's the length of that deal? I, I would I would say he's a similar. Eight years, 260. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. So, so an eight-year, 260 at 30 today. Uh, with inflation, six years later, the the TV money is going to be better. The 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 game's growing. It's turned into an international game, so you're going to get monies coming in, you know, from other parts that aren't there right now. Um, there will be a new CBA. There will be a new CBA, which could affect. Point. Which could affect. We do, that's that's the unknown. Right. Right. I mean, it, it, Nolan to me is probably the comp right now. You know, you you. So at Bregman that, at thirty could Bregman at thirty, and I tweeted this last night that he could theoretically at thirty years old get an eight-year deal for $250 million. And so then you combine the two contracts, and then Bregman's sitting on 350, which is comparable over the length of time and the money to what Bryce Harper just yeah. got. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the type of, of player you're talking about if he continues at, at the pace. But for Alex, he gets paid now, which is a good thing instead of r- really betting on yourself. Mm-hmm. In the sense, he is. But... If you just play out the string to hit free agency at the age of twenty seven, then or twenty eight, then you you then you're talking about a contract like we just talked about with Arenado and Trout and and Yeah, but I don't know if he necessarily bet on himself though. I mean, Trout bet on himself. You know, Mookie Betts is betting on himself. When I was playing, Tim Lunscum bet on himself. Mm-hmm. You know, turned down multi year deals every single year. You know, Trout same way, hits free agency, you know, he you, you don't think Anaheim's come to him with, with extension offers, you know, every year. I'm sure they have, you know. And he kept pushing them away, pushing them away, pushing them away, you know, and, and then really hit them where it hurts when it was time. I mean, he filled a void. Um, Alex filled a void in these early years. Um, you know, and, and look, good for him. Uh, I, I'm excited for him. He got paid. But, yeah, dude, you put him in a – at 30 years old – you give him an eight-year deal for two fifty or three hundred. Um, it's an amazing career. Now you can look at another good comp and a guy to think about here. Who, when we, when I'm, I'm going to say his name, and you're going to be like, ah, good player. Okay, would be Evan Longoria. Uh, and Longoria didn't Longoria win an MVP in Tampa? I mean, yeah. Look up his his contract. Yeah. So and and. This is where the narrative goes back to what do you want to get out of this game? Where Longoria, who put up numbers. So he got six years, $100 million. Six years, $100 million, right? So, and this was however many years and ago. And he, he, the first year of that deal was uh, 20. Wait, that can't be right. Um, Did he just sign the deal? His first extension with the Rays. So the six-year, $100 million deal, 
expire. He'll be a free agent in 24. So 2018, That's a new one. So 2018 would have been the first year of that yeah. contract. So, so, last, this so last year. let me look up Longoria. Longoria first contract. Because that was... That one was a, 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 in my opinion, okay, here we go. So Evan Longoria, as a rookie, this is in 2008. Six was his rookie year. Well, I guess he, he got a signing bonus of $3 million. So that's, that's when he was drafted, I guess. He, right agree- eight. he agrees to a six-year. This is a... Very similar player. Alex and, and Evan, similar players. Okay. Six year, 17.5. You know, and, and everybody's screaming from the mountaintops, what are you doing? That was very incentive laden. He could get up to 44.5, I think, over nine seasons, but he opted out of that, obviously, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, ch- and chose to go the other way. You know, so this is an example with Longoria's deal, it's an example of, of kind of how it can go bad. You know, I think it's a good one for Alex for four years, and obviously the one with Longoria, who, again, similar players, kind of took that security up front where if he would have just gone year to year, kind of dug his feet in the ground and stood his, stood his ground, like Longoria's breaking the bank. Because, like I said, I mean, similar players put up numbers, you know, good teams, not as charismatic, not as, you know, in the face of, of, of everybody. And, and another thing, too, that I think has helped Alex is, you mentioned earlier, his Instagram and his YouTube and, and the fact that he is active on social media and, and people are talking about him. And the Astros understand, as a progressive organization, the value in things like that. Is he going to sell tickets? Absolutely. Do people want to go to the stadium to see Alex Bregman? Are they tuning into his YouTube channel? Are they following him on all the social media platforms? Yes, they are. Does that does that help the Astros? Absolutely. You know, um, so so there's value off the field with Alex, which is different than a lot of these guys. Different than Mike Trout. He has no. He doesn't have any real value off the field. This is just maybe the greatest player to ever pick up a bat in Trout, and that's why he got paid accordingly. But if you put Bregman's personality inside of Mike Trout, I mean, you're you're talking. It's it's a game change. It's over. So there's a reason that 430 is justified. The Angels. Or making the money. Like, it's not like they're mm-hmm. going to lose on that deal. You know, and he brings value. But, man, Alex's stuff that he does off the field, I think, has helped us tremendously. And, and therefore, it's a win. Yeah, Major League Baseball has a giant economic windfall from uh, it, baseball's advanced media. It's BAM Tech is, I guess, the former name. And I'll, I think a lot of people don't even realize that Major League Baseball con- controls its own digital properties and also handles digital properties for uh, for the PGA Tour and for the NHL and uh, you know, they're, uh, Disney bought a third of that company, so watch ESPN has pumped through that. So it's a $3 billion company thereabouts, and it's only four or five years old. I mean, it's incredible that baseball has this. The problem is because baseball controls their media, they don't encourage you and I and, and everybody else to go expose the game for them. Mm-hmm. So that's something that they that they run into that's an issue is that their, let's call it organic reach, right. isn't as big as other sports, whereas the NBA lives on social media. They want their go, fan engagement. Go, they go, want, yeah. yeah, they want their players out there. Major League Baseball, the reason they struggle with that is because you know, they control so much of the content that goes out and you hit a, fa- a paywall and a lot of people are just going to stop there. So mm-hmm. a lot of people aren't going to get exposed to Mike Trout because they're not like me that are going to buy the MLB extra innings package and watch an Angels game. Right. It's so I mean unless if Mike Trout is on in prime time and in the in the age of cord cutters, a lot of people aren't seeing that he exists. And so if you don't have a personality like Alex, a guy like Mike Trout isn't being promoted properly. But you have Bregman who does his YouTube well like like it or don't does his YouTube mm-hmm. channel. He started a podcast this year. He's all over social media. He whenever he whenever he jet sets all over the country and he's hanging out with Conor McGregor or sitting courtside at the Astro or the Rockets or whatever like or the Lakers, he's tweeting and Instagram yep. and he's hanging out with Drake or who I mean it's just Yeah. He's he's out there and he's very visible. That's why he's I mean it's why he's on the cover of RBI baseball this year. And, and the truth is there's value to that. Yeah, of course there you is. Know, it's it, brand. Yep, that's yep. that's personal brand. I mean that's and that you, that's all in different levels, but of course there is. And the other part, and I'm sure you know this, you can speak better to this than I can, but just as a fan who loves the game, 
a major problem that Major League Baseball has is relatability with star players because so many of them are Latin. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it wasn't that long. I mean, they, they, Jose Altuve learning English helped his career tremendously. There, right. were, great, there were times before he, he was fluent and comfortable. He didn't have a walk-off hit. He couldn't do an on-field interview post-game because he wasn't mm -hmm. comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. so that's an MVP that couldn't do a post-game interview. Right. You know, I mean, so... You get a Bregman, and, and then you get Trout, who's sort of distant, and then you got Harper, who's abrasive and doesn't put himself out there a ton, but he's just a big personality right. on the field. And then you have Bregman, who's everywhere. Yep. So there's there's a reason that Bregman is becoming the face of baseball is because he puts his face out there mm -hmm. a ton, and he's a great player and backs it up. Yeah, no, no, it's working. It's absolutely working. Let's talk about the, 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 the likelihood, though, of this deal materializing into what both parties want it to materialize into. All know? right. And you look at guys. So I had, I had some a couple good examples that I want to talk about. Like, okay. So the first one would be Alfonso Soriano. So I got to read one comment first. Okay. okay. Joel Cunningham, the only show where the talent is actively dipping. That's actually not true, uh, because on a hanging with Hester on Friday, Richard Dixon was in here and unapologetically like spitting into a dip cup. At least you you're spitting into a bottle. I try to hide it. <laughs> I mean, he was he, he was spitting into a like. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. a beauty. All right, so Alfonso Soriano. Soriano, and and so for for about four or five years, he was the best player on the planet. He was Mike Trout. He stole thirty bases a year. He hit thirty homers a year. He hit thirty doubles a year. He played he played good defense. You know, he was a big personality. Everybody loved him. Gets the, I want to say it was ten for one seventy five. I'm, I'm not sure what it was. And I saw the back end of that contract in Chicago. So he gets traded to Chicago with me when, when we were there. Here's the risks you're running when you sign these major deals, okay? These big deals like this. Eight-year 136. Okay, eight for 136. When you sign these big deals like this, even though what I saw with Suriano, even though he was still productive at the end, he would still hit 25 right, and drive in 80, 90 homers, which is a really good season, you still seem perceptionally that you're not worth the value that you have been paid. And, and it it's unfair, I think, to the player because there's going to be a decline as you get older. It, and and it, puts you in a, it puts you in a tough spot at the end of your career. You're seeing it right now with Albert. When he's healthy, he's productive. But he says he's 39. He's probably more like 42. Like, not joking. He, he probably is. I mean, when I was with him in St. Louis, he had the body of my uncle. He'd take his shirt off, and he was soft and flabby, and you're like, oh, you're a pro athlete? Like, what are we doing? Like, not he, only a pro athlete, but like, like a you're, dude. You're, like you're a guy. You're the, you're the guy. Yeah. I mean, in St. Louis, he was the, he is Albert. He's Albert. And not a machine. And not a machine. I Albert. And not a machine. <laughs> That's a great commercial. You know, but but why didn't you terminate him, Albert? Yeah. <laughs> so you're running that risk, man, and and it's a it's a slippery slope. Uh, you know, I, I hope for Alex's sake that it can continue to trend upward. But but if if history is going to repeat itself, when you do these deals like this, there's a lot of things that happen to the psyche of a player. One thing that drives the pro athlete, you know, is that that competitive spirit and he's got a world series championship. He's going to win an MVP the next few years. He's loaded, you know? And so what else is it? Like what, why else are you going to the ballpark? You know, and, and this game takes so much buy-in. Like you almost need that to continue to push you to get better and better and better. And, and a lot of times for guys, I mean, it's money. Which is okay. I mean, if that gets you out of bed in the morning, and if that makes you the most productive player you can possibly be because you want to be loaded and rich, then great. It's good for the game. It's good for everybody. You know, but but the the risk that you're running is when, when you've checked all these boxes already, what's going to motivate you to be the best you at that point? Do you really worry about that with Bregman, though? I don't. I mean, I... He's just different, man. I, I've never... And look, I do a job where... In part, I talk to athletes and former athletes every day. That's what I do. I mean, that's what I do. And even in that culture, he's different than everybody else. He's just... Uh, 
Well, there's yeah. a lot of things that happen though in, in one's life. Okay, I get it. Because it just you know, family changes things. I mean, I, I was that guy. There's no question. Family changes things when if when he gets married as kids, no doubt priorities mm-hmm. change. Um, and that's not just true for ball players. That's true for anybody. Look at look at like personally when Drew came, my whole world. Changed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was the guy that would always go anywhere, drop of a hat, do anything, love to get out, have fun. Uh, not that I don't love to get out and have fun, but you know, what, like I, work. I, I could do any station right. event any time I was there. Drew came. Priorities change, man. Mm-hmm. I got a special needs kid. I'm sorry I can't go on a Saturday and be at this event. Or mm-hmm. we just had parade season. Like I used to be able to go ride in the parade vehicles on Saturday. It's like. Let somebody else do that. It's just it, it's just an evolution. There's no so my point is that's that's anybody in life. So so certainly, but even still, I think there's a healthy recognition that Bregman is just different. Like it's just it's a different level. He is. Of, he's of always buy-in. and he's always been that way. And you know, from day one when we first met and started working together, you know, you, you could see that. And I've always said, man, and and I've told you this. There's just something there. He he's just. It's I don't know what it is. It's just the X factor. It's that want. He has the drive. He's not a big guy. He's not a super powerful guy. He's not doesn't have a great arm. Like he's just mentally better than everybody, and truthfully believes that he is, and has something to prove. Guy's a chip on his shoulder. You know, hell, he wore number thirty his freshman year at LSU for the people that passed him up in the draft. You know, he's got a chip on his shoulder. And that's how he operates. What does the money do to the chip? That's what I want to know. You know, and. I, I was the dude too, man. I, that's how that's how that's how I was successful on the baseball field. And I'm not a th- me. And we never do this. Like I'm never uh, unless you ask. I'm not a. This is what I did. This is what I did, guy. I, I I just except when the mics are off, then that's all you ever talk about. As a joke, I'm kidding. You never talk about yourself. But I will tell you what drove me was the I'm gonna prove you wrong narrative. It, truthfully, going back to little league, it was a. Uh, I played different than everybody else because I had something to prove. And then once I felt like personally that all those boxes were checked, it was hard to play with that same intensity. It was very difficult for me to prepare to go out on the field and play with that exact same intensity. Not hard. It was impossible. I couldn't do it. And so then the product on the field from the naked eye probably didn't suffer a whole lot, but I knew internally, okay, I'm I'm kind of checked out here. Like, I'm doing this because it's my job at this point, but that's not why I did it. Like, I did it because I loved it. I did it because I was good at it and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But for me, it got to a point where the boxes were all checked, and it was just tough, man. And, and I wasn't willing to go just to collect a check. That's just not how I operate. So I hope for his sake that that there's more boxes. Okay, I guess that's what I'm getting at. I hope he has more boxes and there's more things that he wants to do. I, 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 as long as he can continue to want more and want more and want more. I mean, you look at, he's probably one of your favorite players of all time. He's one of mine for sure, and Jeter. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why Derek Jeter didn't get married. It's not because he didn't have beautiful women throwing themselves at him and probably women that he loved and wanted to be around. Jeter, and I don't know this for sure because I don't know him great, if I had to guess, he knew that once that happened, the focus on the game would change and he wouldn't be Jeter anymore. You know, and it's a it's a very uh, mature, forward way of thinking, you know, and, and it is he would have he would have changed as a player. So yes, I do worry about that with him. Um and you know, Alex was a different player is a a much different player than I than I than I was. I'm not even close to what this guy has. Um so what could motivate him is I want to break Trout's record. I want to make more money than Trout. You know, and that'd be a good one. And it knowing him it probably is. So I, I worry a little bit, but I'm fired up for him. Shot him a text last night and um, you know, so hopefully hopefully he plays it out and does great. Hopefully he gets through three years of this deal and the Astros go we need to lock him up for 10 more. That's the hope. You know, and then he's an Astro for life and the whole deal. Tell people about prime occupational medicine. If you own a company, Matt, and you have employees, you want those employees to be healthy. 
You also want the employees to be as productive as you possibly can in order to increase your bottom line. The good people at Prime make sure medically that your employees are clicking on all cylinders. Also, they can come in, they can drug test, they can blood test, they can bring in these little cool ambulances, which I love. They're little mini ambulances. And if there's anything that happens on site, they can take care of it just as if you were in a hospital. Prime Occupational Med can take care of everything you need from a business owner to make sure your workforce is top-notch. Call them at 225-749-5750 or check them out on the web www.primeoccmed.com. Uh, regretfully, we do not have available to us the uh, Kick Rocks open and all that stuff. So we can do Kick Rocks or because we're short on time now because we went heavy there on the Bregman talk, we can go straight into some uh, LSU Yale talk for tomorrow and LSU Nichols tonight in baseball. Let's oh, do that. that. Okay, that's, yeah, that's cool. All right, let's start with LSU Yale. Um, thoughts? You know, Yale's got a pro. They got one guy. He's a good player. Um, you know, smart kids, right? So they're going to run the offense really good. They'll be in the right right spot. And um, You're really locked in on this one, aren't you? I, I bet you they get real low in defense. Real low in defense? They play, squatty? They play squatty and low to the ground yep. on defense. Probably move. Do you think they slap the floor? Clap their hands you think and slap the floor. You think they're, they're floor slappers when they get intense on defense? Yep. Um, yeah. Do you think they huddle? Like around the free throw line every time there's a dead ball and they'll put their arms around each other? Probably. Yeah. What do. else do you think they do? I do. I think that they shoot the three ball really well. They don't, actually. Um, I think they have five guys averaging double figures. They don't. Four. Nope. Three. I'll have to check on that one. They have five guys averaging, that, averaging they don't, double They figures. don't have that. No, I know they don't have that. They run. Oh, they do run up and down the floor. Yep. They, they run that. a fast tempo team. Um, they like to run, they like to score, like to shoot. They, they, want, they score 80 a game. Yeah, yep. score 80 a game. Um, they want the action to happen early. I don't know anything about Yale. What I'm doing right now <laughs> is the most generic it, preview you could possibly. Is, this is what I'm doing. I've, I'm telling you what I've heard. Like, yeah. I mean, who watches Yale? Like, how do we know? Nobody. Right? Okay. So. That's real. I'm with you on that. I, I just, the only thing about this game, so athletically, uh, athletically, LSU is superior. They have one guy that's that's a pro with uh, Myoni. Um, Jordan Bruner is a forward who did have some SEC offers. So he, he's 6'8", bigger kid. Uh, that's kind of it mm-hmm. as far as, like, dudes. Uh, L- LSU is just physically a better team than them. The only thing I worry about, and they're seven and a 7.5-point favorite all this stuff. The only thing w- with this game that I worry about is exactly what happened against Florida, exactly what's been LSU's Achilles heel all year. When, you know, they played seven overtime games, man. I mean, LSU gets a lead on teams, and they get complacent. And they start taking bad shots early in the shot clock. Instead of finishing, they get complacent, and teams find a way to go on a run and get back in it and make mm-hmm. it a game in the yeah. final two minutes. And LSU's been very good this year at winning those games, but in the event that you don't, like when you blew it at home against Arkansas or you blew it at home against Florida or you just blew it against Florida in the SEC tournament when games when you led and should have won, if you do that this go around, your season's over. Right. That's it's the finality of it all that that puts you a little more on edge in these games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, the risk the risk that you run here is is the the things that you you just stated. You know, also from a preparation standpoint, and I know this is probably beating a dead horse, but in the NCAA tournament, more than any games that they're going to play all year, you can lock in and focus on one team, and you have a, you have some time to prepare on that on that one team. You don't know who you're playing next, right? So there's no tomorrow. This this is gonna this is gonna happen. We need to worry about this or that. And and you your guy that's been leading that charge the entire season is not going to be there. Yeah. You know. And and you know my question is the assistants that have now taken charge. So you've got Bedford and and the other guy, um, Greg Hire. Hire's good, mm-hmm. right? And then Armstrong are the three assistants. But Greg Hire was at Wichita State under Greg Marshall when they went to their Final Four. Mm-hmm. He's a really good assistant. He, he's a future head coach for sure. So so it's it's fallen on those guys' shoulders tremendously, you know. And and you don't really want from a preparation standpoint and how we're going to attack not only this team in Yale, which I do think LSU is going to win this game. But not only this team in Yale, but but this whole deal moving forward. You know, the 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 committee didn't do LSU any favors. You know, obviously getting out of this side of the bracket is going to be difficult. I think games one and two are winnable. Michigan State and Duke. Good luck. Who's in your final four? I haven't even done it. Oh come on! I, I'm not. I don't do it. Yeah. What do you mean you don't do it? I don't do it. 
when there's like money up, up like like there's real money up. There's always something up. Yeah, but I'm not. I mean, I'm not gonna fill it out. We may do one. I don't know. You have to do one on our bracket challenge on our station bracket challenge. Well, I've never been asked to do it. I would like to. Can well, I do that? Yeah. Okay. How do I do it? Go to 1045ESPN.com. The bracket challenge is right there on the home page. Fill out your bracket and you're entered. I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, you need to do it. We'll do it right now. I mean, we're doing the show right now. It do, might be fun to do, do, do it. No, no, no. Do, do, do it after. Do, do it after. Uh, LSU Nichols in baseball tonight. Um, the, the most notable thing here is that Saul Garza is going to start at catcher. Uh, give me a thought there on, on Garza. Popping a squat. I mean, they've brought him along extremely slow. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to see a better arm behind the plate. No doubt about it. Mathis, although I thought he's done a great job framing, receiving, kind of controlling the game. Um, but but Garza, Garza is is more talented from an from a uh, you know arm standpoint. But we, we haven't really seen him receive or block just yet. I know in the fall. Uh, these guys kind of raved about him. You talked more about the offense than anything, but but arm strength I think is big. It, it gives LSU another weapon. You look at being strong in the center of the field, center field, shortstop, second base, pitching obviously, and then behind the plate. The behind the plate piece defensively has been the one question mark for me all year. I think you have a lights out center fielder. Your middle's good. A question at second, but second's not that important. Um, you know, so this this solidifies your your guy behind the plate, assuming he can do well. Do you think he'll ultimately stay there? I hope so. I, I don't know. I mean, we, defensively or because of the offense? Defensively. It's a huge vulnerability right now. Yeah. It's really the biggest vulnerability that this team has defensively. Yes. Is they can't throw out a runner. They did much better at controlling the running game this past weekend against Kentucky. They actually pegged a guy for Kentucky, and and they caught him. Uh, pit, Maneri pitched. He's so good at, at mm -hmm. that. Maneri pitched out, and they threw down a second and caught, caught the guy in a rundown. He, like, stop, stopped halfway. He was just dead mm -hmm. right. So that's their biggest vulnerability. It, Reed's actually played well at third. Yeah. Dude, he played. To end game one, he caught a line drive with the infield in. Eh, he was playing about even with the bag. Caught a line drive to end the game. He picked a ball down the line, like behind the bag, and threw across the diamond, made the play. I was like, holy Chris Reed, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's we've talked about his bat, but if he were if he just threw up on himself defensively, then maybe you're DHing him because you can't justify not having the, the glove at third. He's played a really good yeah. third base. Yeah. No, he's done Chris Chris has done well. And and, and it, you know, it's like Man, if if we would have just locked in three years ago, what what are we talking about at this point? You know, I'm glad to have him right now. That's his fault. Yeah, no, no, it absolutely is. He's done good. Second base, and I mentioned it's not that hard. It's really not. I mean, who can turn the double play is really your only question at second base. And 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 back to Garza though, when you're talking about a 270 hitter. Like he's swinging the bat pretty good. I, I think he's capable of doing more. I think he will do more. Um, you know, as the season goes on, as he gets more consistent at bats. And one thing to think about offensively, too, that we haven't really touched on with Garza, when you're used to playing defense every game and hitting, and now all of a sudden they take the defensive piece away, and now all you're going to do is hit and focus on your at-bats, what do you think the mind does? Oh, you get lazy. You check out. You check out, and then when you don't have success, you just beat yourself up. Like, I just want to hit again. Let me go hit again. Let me go hit. And then that stuff starts to compound. And all the defense – at least for me, the defense was almost like, a, okay, I can control this a little bit more now. You know, offensively, it's just it's so hard to control. It, it almost gave me like a – it was like a break, you know, a break from the stress of hitting. And with D – dude, DHing is tough. DHing is extremely hard. Pinch hitting, even worse. I mean, that's the two hardest things to do in the game is DHing and pinch hitting because you, you don't have the you, – you don't have the break from from the, the offensive strain. You know, I mean, it's a – it's – they always say baseball is a game of failure. Well, no, it's not. Hitting a baseball is a game of failure. You know, and so when you that's all you're doing and you're just thinking about failing, I mean, that sucks. So maybe getting him in the flow of the game, catching, throwing, you know, I mean, I, I think we're going to see him really start to figure out offensively. All right. It's uh, the Ride Podcast. He's Ryan and Matt, brought to you by Prime Occupational Medicine. We appreciate our friends at Prime Occupational Medicine, primeoccmed.com. A uh, safety, human resources, corporate planning. Check them out even outside of the Baton Rouge area. They're all over, right? I mean, all over the region, all over the yep. world, actually. Prime Occupational Medicine. If you're a business owner, 
Healthy employees save your organization money by having healthier, more productive employees. Prime Occupational Medicine, they have the staff, the services to help you realize that end. Prime Occupational Medicine, primeocmed.com. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, by the way, they're also tagged in the Facebook post, so please go like their Facebook page. That is a big help as well. Okay, let's do uh, Ask Us. We do, however, or we didn't uh, a moment ago have the, um, uh, the Kick Rocks bed. And that's because seldom do things ever work around here. Yeah, right. How about a live version of uh, Green Onions? I like it. For Ask Us. You like it? I'll take that. It's just the one I could find on YouTube. I shouldn't say that, but I did. Sue me. Don't, because they probably will. You can't say that? Well, we're not licensed to use this. Oh, don't say that. I like it, huh? I like this one better. I like the, uh, what is this? Is it the symbols here? That's, well, he's not blank, bang. That's the drummer tapping the symbol. I picture somebody going. No. With gloves this is, on. This with is, white gloves. This isn't a marching band. It's not a marching band. Oh. All right. But the visual was pretty good. Yeah. All right, here we go. Ask us. Uh, Steven Bro says, why does Coach Maneri not change the bottom of the line to get more hits? What are you going to do? That's on you to figure out. I mean, I, I'm not into the let's elongate this lineup. You know, I, I, I want to do my damage. Let's, let's, let's get it. And, and then when these four, five, six guys come around, we're going to score. There's a good chance we're scoring then. And then you just hope those guys at the bottom figure it out. There's two trains of thought. Sometimes guys will move them around, sprinkle it out to kind of make the lineup longer. But... I'm, and I'm just not into giving away out. I want murderers row. I want one, two, three, four, five to be dangerous. Can't you have that but still take... Uh, all right, so I'll give you a, a for instance. Let's say you keep Smith, Watson, Duplantis. I like Cabrera in the four hole better than having him bat fifth. Okay, I do. What if you then bat Garza fifth? Your DH, whoever that might be. So let's call it DiGiacomo, sixth. Reed, seventh. And then you could go, well, you have first base and then second base, whoever that's going to be. You could have, be or take Beloso, fifth, and then bump Garza, sixth. Go DiGiacomo. And then you could have your second baseman, DH, uh, uh, Bruce Arter or Hughes, mm -hmm. whoever. My point is, what that does, it gives you Reed in the bottom third. I like having someone who has the highest on base percentage on the team in the bottom third of the lineup. So there's a good chance that guy's on base when your lineup flips for Smith, who could put a ball in the gap and score somebody from first. Well, in that, in that case, you put him at eight or nine. Okay. Y you know what I mean? But, but then, why would you want the guy with your highest on base percentage? Because you said you want Murderer's Row. My point is you can still achieve you that end. You could elongate Murderer's Row, maybe. Okay. I see what you're saying. And you would go, okay, I'm with it. It's a good thought. What is the lineup? I mean, he's kind of tinkering with it. Still tinkering. It kind of depends who DH is as well. Um, there's another question that says, Hughes or Bruce Hart at second base tonight. Who would you start? Who do you like there better? Um, I like... I like Broussard there, probably better defensively. It gives you a little bit more speed. But I mean, you just said it didn't matter defensively. It really, I mean, it really doesn't. I mean, I guess the the bat, the bat for both of those guys right now is kind of a coin flip. Um, I went. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Broussard's got more abs under his belt, more experience. So, I mean, probably Broussard. I don't, no, I want to go through this because the the bats being what and what. All right. So let me let me bring this up. Okay. So Hal Hughes right now is batting 200. Not great. Uh, Brand Broussard, 167. Mm -hmm. So Broussard's 30 points higher. On base percentage... Oh, Hughes. I'm sorry. Hughes is 30 points higher. On base percentage, Hughes is 342. Broussard is 302. So 40 points higher on the on-base percentage. Hughes, 12 strikeouts in 60 ABs. Broussard has 5 strikeouts in 36 ABs. Uh, 10 walks for Hughes, 6 walks for Broussard. Point is, man, like, essentially everywhere you go, essentially everywhere you go, offensively, neither's hitting at a high clip, but Hughes has been better. 
He is yeah. better. He's getting on base more. He's scoring more runs. He's walking more. Like, yeah. I mean, he's been more productive. Right. And if it's what and what defensively, give me Hughes. Yeah. I'm not saying either is a great option. What I love, what I would love is for Gavin Dugas to be healthy because I think you give that kid a shot. Oh, yeah. He'd, he'd, yeah. he'd have a shot. Because I think he'd play second and I think he can hit. He can hit. So, and he was hitting early. So let me see when that kid comes back from his thumb injury if he doesn't maybe yeah. insert himself into that lineup. All right. Ask us. Um, roll through some of these here. Uh, who? What do you do with Mathis if Garza stays behind the plate? He's just kind of odd man out. I mean, what, what are you going to do? I mean, you may, you may throw him a bone, DH him every once in a while. I mean, I, I don't know. You're going to DH a kid that's hitting 200? Got a little pop. I don't know. I mean, what's DiGiacomo doing? What's his average? The was at 281. Mathis is at 207. So Giacomo gives you a little bit more. There's no and, and he's got speed, and he's got speed on the base too, yeah. I mean, it's that's not even. I don't even think that's a question. I, yeah. I mean, I don't want to be rude with it, but no, he's kind of odd man. He, out he's out. Point. I yeah. mean, it's you can let him catch a midweek game like Garza rests his knees, sort of stuff like that. But maybe maybe play him some at first. I, I don't know. I don't but know. his bat's not good enough to justify playing him at first when Beloso is hitting the ball. Mm-hmm. And the thing about Beloso is he kind of scares you because he'll run one out of the yard. He will. Um, let's see. Ask us. I'm getting to him here. Who makes the final four? We already did that. Ask us. Favorite fishing hole. I got a nice little spot right there behind traction that I've been. That oh I've boy. Been, yeah. Joel Cunningham. Why does a program like LSU, which has the financial means to hire good coaches, continue to hire GAs and volunteers to be the hitting coach? You invest so much into the program to get the country's best hitters, then turn them over to the volunteers. Doesn't make sense. Look, I mean, when, when when these guys got here, and I'll just be honest, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of teaching going when I was there from a hitting standpoint. I mean, you could either hit or you couldn't hit. I mean, it was just more of a, a, a structure and give you the opportunity to get your work in. Now, where the you know where the, the useful part of it is, is, is can you talk a guy out of a slump? You know, and so a lot of it is between the years. It's not necessarily experience being a hitting coach. It's how do you relate to the player and get them to where they need to be. Uh, to answer the question, you know, I don't know. You you go get Alan Dunn, who who is resume is unbelievable, um, you know, and and uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't, you're in a bad spot because I don't have you know an, everybody and you don't want to talk. Yeah, I mean, I don't have an answer. The to reality that. is what you're about to say, and I'll say it. You went and found a great pitching coach with an awesome resume, and you've not done the same thing for hitting, and it doesn't make sense. So LSU fans that are confused by it, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I'm not saying the same thing against Micah or Sean Ochinko. It's not guys that don't work hard or know what they're doing, but th- it stands to reason. I'll, look, I'll give you another example on the football staff. Why in the hell is Dennis Johnson your defensive line coach? Played at LSU. He was a GA here. I'm hopeful he, he has great potential for the future, but... It's atypical to go from being a grad assistant to being a full-time staff member at LSU. That's well, not how it, that's not how it works. Well, that's okay because O is the D-line. Coach. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter because then you're not ma- you have 10 assistants, that's it. You're not maximizing that spot. Yeah. That's a problem. So, that's my point. I get it. I get what people are saying. It's not the knock Sean or or Micah before them. And look, they were in a tough spot when Andy left. They were. Andy left him in a pinch like a month before the season. Correct. And so Micah just stepped into that role. And and then they went to the College World Series, mm-hmm. and he got better. Mm-hmm. And then he tore up his knee, and they were in a pinch again. I mean, I, th- sometimes there's okay, an Okay, because you tore your knee up, you can't be the hitting coach? I don't know. That's I, what Maneri said. Yeah, that, that, that's, okay. I mean, really? What, what is he's not hitting. Okay. Hey, look, man, I'm just telling you what Maneri said, man. All right, let's do a few more. I'm kind of over this version of Green Onions. All right, real quick. Let's blow, blow and go on through, through a few more here. Uh, Alden Cartwright, ask us, what's your take on pitch counts, Ryan, uh, for pitchers, for youth and travel, high school, all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think it's super important. I, I think that... All right. Yeah, I think that um, that it absolutely has to be monitored. You know, I, I also think that more more important than the actual pitch count, I think, I think you need to, to dig into it a little bit more. Um, number of pitches per inning, uh, how much rest in between innings, which a lot of the youth coaches, they don't take that into consideration. So just because little Johnny's at 50 pitches, they think he's good to keep going. What they don't realize is little Johnny threw 50 of those pitches in one inning. And, and that's where a lot of that damage uh, occurs. You know, So it's okay to extend a guy if he's having proper rest 
uh, between innings. And, and the flip side of that is you have to build up to the to the number of pitches, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70 pitches. Maybe I'll let you and Carwright do a podcast on that. All right, let's go, let's go fast. Ask us, go to any sporting event. What is it? A World Series, Game 7. Ask us, most embarrassing athletic misplay. Hashtag T-Bob softball. Show that T-Bob throughout the first pitch of the softball game the other night. Rolled it. Was it brutal? Rolled it. Oh, gosh. Underhand. Yeah. Rolled it underhand. Like, come on, man. Yeah, it's, it's like 40 feet. Um, like, for me personally or just that I've ever seen? For me personally, I let a ball go through my legs in the um, SEC tournament. And they kept playing it on the jumbo oh, after that inning. That was brutal, super yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, ask us, how do you feel about age limit for curveballs? Should uh, you have to be a certain age? To yeah, throw? I mean, we don't let our guys throw them. You know, I I, I don't know. I, I, look, I'm not a pitching guy. Truthfully, I don't know. I mean, I, mm. I hit. I don't. Full disclosure, I hate pitchers. They right. tried to take food off my table my entire life. I don't care. You know what? Do whatever you want. Just throw it down the middle. Let me hit it off your face. Ask us, best pitcher you ever faced. Tim Lincecum in his prime. Ask us what's the word on Willis. Um, made a few changes with his swing, and uh, yeah, I think he's going to get some at bats here or there, and hopefully he can get hot. Favorite organization you played for in the majors? Cardinals and Giants are a push. Matt, can you sing the pumping song Louisiana Saturday Night? No. Where did Terrio get his T-shirt? Sosis. What's that? It's a little boutique across the river. Shout Terry. out to my man Brad Bass. His wife owns it. Terrio needs to be the hitting coach. That's from Merrick Mathern. Not yet. All right. That's going to do it for us. Tell people one more time about Prime Occupational Medicine. Give them a call, 225-749-5750. Prime OCC Med. They can help you out if you're a business owner. Get your employees right. Get them healthy. Get them productive. All right. It's going to do it for us. Paul O'Neill, thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everybody for watching. If you're on Facebook Live, please share this post if you're listening uh rate us on itunes and all that stuff if you're watching on the watch app uh retweet and all that good stuff we'll see you next week thanks man you too